looked at your phone for a while and suddenly felt your eyes getting tired or even a slight headache without knowing why. It might not be your screen size or brightness. It could actually be something called POVM dimming. And with the Pixel 10, Google might finally be fixing it. POVM stands for pulse width modulation. It's a method used by phone displays, especially LED ones, to control brightness. Instead of smoothly reducing the light, it turns the screen on and off very fast. This flickering is usually too fast for the eye to notice directly. But the problem is, if the flicker rate is too low, it can cause real discomfort for some people. You might feel eye strain, fatigue, or even slight headaches, especially in little light or when scrolling through your phone for long periods. Here's where things stand today. The Pixel 9 series uses a PWM dimming rate of just 240 hertz. That's not very high. And while it may be okay for many users, others, especially those sensitive to flicker, can really feel the difference. For comparison, Samsung's Galaxy S25 series offers around 492 hertz, which is definitely better, though still not perfect. But some Android brands are already taking it much further. For example, Otter's Magic 6 Pro uses a 4,320 hertz PWM dimming rate, at least when brightness is below 30%. That kind of rate makes the screen feel almost flicker-free to the human eye. Once brightness goes over 30%, it drops to about 360 hertz, which is still higher than what Google currently offers. The good news, Google finally seems to be paying attention. In a recent April 2025 statement, Google confirmed that their teams are aware of the problem and are working on improvements. They even said we could expect updates later this year. That timing strongly suggests that the change will arrive with the Pixel 10 series, which is likely to launch around October. And this is not something that can be fixed with a simple software update. Raising the POUM rate usually requires changes at the hardware level. That means the improvement would likely be built into the Pixel 10 display from the start. If that happens, it could be a huge step forward especially for people who care about eye comfort but still want to use a Pixel phone. There's still no official word on whether Google will introduce DC dimming, another method used to reduce flicker completely. Brands like Xiaomi already use it, and it's one of the cleanest ways to reduce strain. But even without it, just increasing the PWN rate alone would be a big step in the right direction. Why does this matter so much? Well, let's face it, displays are one of the most used parts of any phone. Whether you're watching videos, reading, or just messaging, you're staring at that screen for hours every day. A more comfortable screen can improve your daily experience in ways you don't even notice right away, but your eyes do. Google's Pixel phones are already known for their great cameras, smooth Android experience, and regular updates. But display comfort? That's been one of the weaker points. This upgrade would help Google catch up with other Android brands and maybe even win over people who avoided Pixels for this reason. So if you're someone who's ever felt eye strain from long phone use or just wants the best display experience possible, keep an eye on the Pixel 10. And as always, nothing is confirmed until the launch event, but the signs look promising. We'll keep watching this story closely. So if you want to stay updated with all the latest Pixel news and smartphone leaks, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Is Samsung ready to launch its new foldable phone sooner than expected? According to the latest leaks, the Galaxy Z Flip 7 and Galaxy Z Fold 7 might be unveiled in the first week of July 2025, which would be earlier than last year's launch. If that happens, it'll be Samsung's fastest launch for its foldables so far. A new report from the Zhongyang says Samsung is planning a big Galaxy Unpacked event in New York, returning to the same city where it launched the Galaxy Z Flip 4 and Fold 4. In recent years, Samsung had moved its Unpacked events to Seoul and Paris, but now, it looks like they're going back to New York for this launch. And this event might not only be about phones. Samsung is also expected to unveil a new Galaxy Watch, and for the first time, it's Android XR-based headset, a mixed reality device meant to compete with others like Apple Vision Pro. On top of that, there are rumors that Samsung will tease two more new products, a more affordable Galaxy Z Flip FE and the company's long-rumored tri-folding phone. But let's get into what we know about the Z Flip 7 and Z Fold 7. The Galaxy Z Flip 7 is rumored to come with a bigger 4-inch cover screen that stretches nearly edge to edge, making it more useful for quick tasks. Inside, it could feature a 6.85-inch foldable screen along with a 50 megapixels, plus 12 megapixels dual camera setup on the outside and a 12 megapixels selfie camera on the inside. Powering it all could be a 4,300 mAh battery with support for 25-watt fast charging. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 might be even more exciting. It could have a 6.5-inch cover screen and a large 8.2-inch foldable display inside. 
Camera wise, we could see a 200 megapixels main camera, 12 megapixels ultra wide lens, and a 10 megapixels telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom. There may also be a 12 megapixel selfie camera on the front and a new, improved under display camera on the inside. It might be powered by a 4,400 mAh battery and also support 25 watt charging. Both phones are expected to run One UI 8.0 based on Android 16 and be powered by Snapdragon 8 Elite chipsets. That's Qualcomm's top tier processor, so performance should be fast and smooth. Each phone is likely to come with at least 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage with higher storage options expected too. We could also see some design improvements. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 is said to be only 4.5 millimeters thick when unfolded and around 9.5 millimeters when folded. That would make it slimmer than many other foldables on the market. Both phones may also have IP48 ratings, which means they'll be better protected against dust and water. And of course, you'll get stereo speakers, a USB Type-C port, and all the high-end features you'd expect. So, to sum it up, Samsung is bringing its foldables early this year, likely during the first week of July, and they're packing serious upgrades. From better cameras and bigger cover screens to slimmer designs and more powerful chips, the Galaxy Z Flip 7 and Z Fold 7 could be Samsung's best foldables yet. What's more exciting to you, the new design, the improved specs, or the fact that it's launching early? Let us know what you think in the comments, and if you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to stay updated on all things tech. What if your phone could grow bigger just by sliding it open and still fit in your pocket? That's the idea behind Samsung's upcoming rollable phone, and a new render gives us a good look at what it might look like. Based on a patent recently granted to Samsung by the US Patent and Trademark Office, this new design might actually solve the biggest problem with foldable phones, bulkiness. The phone in this render was created by Domo Eye Annex Sleek 7. It shows a sleek device with very thin bezels and a unique sliding display. When closed, it looks compact and pocket-friendly. When expanded, it turns into a bigger screen. Great for watching videos, reading, or even playing games. Of course, it's not completely slim. The mechanism that allows the screen to roll out adds some thickness, especially compared to Samsung's regular phones. It also has a camera setup that looks a lot like the one on the Galaxy Z Flip 6, with two lenses and a flash in the upper left corner. Now, this phone isn't just about the hardware. Samsung is also expected to include some smart new AI features. One of the highlights is instant translation. You can speak in your language and see the translated response on your screen right away. That's something that could really help people when traveling or talking to someone who speaks a different language. There's also a tool that can summarize long texts. So if you don't want to read through a huge message, your phone will tell you what it's about in seconds. On top of that, the AI can give you helpful reminders, like when it's time to leave for your next meeting or appointment. In terms of photography, Samsung wants to make the experience easier too. The phone's AI will automatically detect the type of scene you're about to shoot and adjust things like lighting and focus. You just have to point and press the shutter button. It'll also help clean up photos by removing unwanted objects or even changing colors with a single tap. For gamers, this rollable phone might be especially exciting. The system is expected to manage power and heat on its own to keep games running smoothly. And with the extra space on the sides of the device, Samsung could add new gaming controls that pop up when you need them. While many people are still talking about Huawei's Trifold Mate XD, this rollable phone might be a better option in the long run. Motorola is also working on rollable designs, so it seems this could be the next big trend. Rollables don't need multiple hinges or big folds across the screen. They just stretch when you need a bigger display and stay compact the rest of the time. The only downside? The render doesn't show what the device looks like when it's fully expanded. So for now, we can only imagine how big it actually gets. Still, this concept feels like it has real potential. It keeps the convenience of a small phone while giving you a larger screen when you need it, without the extra bulk that comes with foldables. If Samsung pulls this off, the rollable design might turn out to be even more popular than the trifolds. Would you rather have a rollable phone or a foldable one with multiple screens? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates like this. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.